The Red Baron is a German-British film from 2008 that I never caught in an Australian cinema but have adored since it hit DVD and Blu-ray down here. To me, the most striking thing about this film is that it exists at all. Movies set during World War I with a decent budget at least are rare, 1917 probably being the most recent exception to that rule, and I think it's more than fair to say that movies set in the air war of World War I are even rarer. The second most striking thing to me is that the film uses a mostly German cast, but has them speaking in English, it's not a dub. I appreciated this greatly as it put brand new faces in front of me who I could really invest in as the characters. It wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio as the Red Baron, Brad Pitt as Werner Voss, which would have been absolutely terrible. I do still get taken out of the film a little by the roles played by Joseph Fiennes and Lena Headey, but I think both are there to appeal to the UK audience and possibly the US Australian audience and so on. Anyway, with the stage set and a quality cast in place, does the film deliver? Well, yes and no. With World War I air war movies so rare, it is an absolute treat to see biplanes and triplanes dogfighting via the use of computer graphics, albeit computer graphics that are starting to show their age a little. We do see some absolutely massive engagements in this film that it would be impossible to film in real life, even if there were dozens of aircraft available to film it, which there aren't. The main storyline, or at least how I see the main storyline, is also very good. We see Manfred von Richthofen as a young boy hunting in a forest with his siblings before observing a plane flying overhead, the suggestion being that he gains a fascination with flight at that moment, but is soon rushed forward in time to him as an up-and-coming young pilot who even fanboys a little for the German aces of the early World War I era. During these early sequences in the film, the soundtrack leaps and bounds along, swirling with an almost swashbuckling vibe as we see von Richthofen and his contemporaries as quite carefree types. Are you out of your bloody minds? Yes, yes sir. sir. You risk the squadron's planes to attend an enemy funeral. Yes, yes sir. They managed down in Newham, sir. Captain Winston Clive Walker. Yes. I mean, sir, my uncle, the Duke of Westchester, is his mother's brother-in-law. Lehman and I, we went to school with him. Eaton, sir. You're talking about a British pilot, for heaven's sake! Pity he's not with us anymore, sir. You can see in the footage here, they're all out of uniform to varying degrees, augmenting their kit with bright ski jumpers, fur coats, civilian leather jackets, scarves and the like. There's also a strong sense of them being sportsmen, and there's even a scene midway through the film where von Richthofen berates his brother Lothar for trying to kill an enemy pilot rather than just downing his machine. This is not a polo game. We're not boys anymore. We're grown men fighting a bloody war. I'm quite aware of that. I'm quite aware of that. But still, we can fight it with grace. As the film progresses, and most of the pilots we meet early on are progressively killed in action, the soundtrack becomes more muted. It's the same theme, but played in a slower, melancholic way. You also notice the pilots in von Richthofen's squadron are increasingly in uniform, underpinning in a subtle way that things are getting far more serious than they were at the start or midway through the war. The war is going bad for Germany, and from the air, the likes of von Richthofen and his men can see the carnage firsthand. All of this is presented excellently. There's even a strong anti-war feeling present, which I'm not sure entirely fits with how the real von Richthofen would have felt, but it doesn't detract from the film too much either. So where doesn't the film deliver? Two areas, really. First, the Lena Headey character is introduced as a nurse very early in the story and in several scenes as the film progresses, and then later looks after von Richthofen when he has a serious head injury. All of this is accurate. Von Richthofen was wounded in this way, and the nurse, Kate Odersdorf, was indeed a real person. That's fine. But the movie then slips into what I call Hollywood mode, which as a German-British film it really should have avoided, and it starts a love affair between the two. 
This begins in an almost Top Gun kind of way, with von Richthofen as the arrogant pilot and Odersdorf as the similarly aged, but much more mature, love interest. She resists him for a time, then falls for his charms. Seriously, guys? Seriously? The second area where I don't think the film delivers is the Joseph Fiennes character of Arthur Roy Brown. Again, a real person, and one who has long been credited, in some quarters at least, as the man who shot down von Richthofen. In the film, however, this is romanticised to a bizarre level. Let's look at it. In 1916, von Richthofen shoots down Brown, but this never happened. Brown is found seriously injured in his machine by von Richthofen and his squadron mates who pull him from the wreck and he is then nursed by Odersdorf. This didn't happen either. Off screen, Brown goes to a prisoner of war camp but escapes. That didn't happen either. Brown and von Richthofen meet again in the sky with both needing to ditch this time. That didn't happen either. On the ground, near their ditched machines, von Richthofen and Brown hang out, they drink from Brown's hip flask, and they talk about life. If you're thinking, did that happen? No, that didn't happen. At the end of the film, we see Brown smuggle Odersdorf over enemy lines onto the Allied side to visit the Baron's grave, and it's strongly hinted that Brown killed him in, in air combat. But again, Broadly speaking, this never happened, especially if we take the most likely outcome that von Richthofen was killed by ground fire and not Brown at all to be the reality at hand, let alone Brown taking Odersdorf over enemy lines and all of this stuff. It's, it's puzzling. All told, it leaves me with a film that I think looks good, has a strong core story, and is played by a bunch of terrific actors who I find engrossing to watch every time I see the film. Indeed, Matthias Schweighofer, who plays the Red Baron, is increasingly appearing in uh, English-speaking films of late, and that's just awesome because I think he's a great actor. But at the same time, it's equally hard to go past the Kate Odersdorf love story without a groan, or finding the over-romanticizing of von Richthofen and Brown's relationship to be really hard to stomach. It creates a movie with almost two personalities. One is historical and realistic, the other is quite fanciful and more than a bit cringe-inducing. For all of that, however, I still really enjoy this film every time I watch it, and I do commend it to you if a World War I movie, mostly set in the skies, is in your wheelhouse. Frankly, they don't make them like this very often, so it's worth grabbing onto them when they do. Anyway, have you seen The Red Baron? What did you make of it? Do you cringe at the Hollywood moments, or do you just go with it? Why not let me know your thoughts below, down in the comments.